Happy Thursday, hockey fans. It is a college hockey game day. The Frozen Four kicks off today, and you'll be seeing that face on television today. That's Kobe Cohen. I'm Johnny Lazarus. This is Morning Cup of Hockey, presented by Betway. If you're going to place a bet, bet on Betway. Please play responsibly, and remember, you must be 19 years of age or older. Kobe and I are going to preview the Frozen Four for most of today's show. Then we're going to talk about the Western Conference playoff picture because the St. Louis Blues all of a sudden are just three points back. We'll get into our Out West Worst Team of the Week, which will, you know, I'm sure you can all take a guess at who that's going to be, but uh, a lot to get into today before we do any of that. Colby, how's Minnesota? I know it's uh, sunny over there, but a little noisy in the hotel room. You, uh, you sleep okay? <laughs> It was 75 degrees yesterday in Minnesota, which is pretty rare, I think, uh, or at least 70 degrees, we'll say. Um, so not bad. We're we're uh, we're gearing up, man. This is uh, this is this is the culmination of of the season for college. I think this this Frozen Four has so much more excitement, I would say, than than years previous, just because you know all of the major star power that's here. I mean, you've got like I don't know, like 10 kids that that have potential to be you know stars in the nhl um at some point in their career and and a number of them you know are guys that uh probably well it, the season's pretty much run its course here so you might see one game for a guy or something like that but mm -hmm. um it, it it's certainly it's certainly full of 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 talent and and it feels that way based on you know the media presence that's here i think the the media um presence is like two or three times the the size of the normal media presence at one of these things because again you you have celebrini and you have goche and you just have all these stars from all these different schools so um it's it's so far so good yesterday we we met with all the players well you know four or five players from each team each head coach you know kind of talk through what's been going on with them and and feel them out a little bit and uh Today, I think, is the day everybody here is looking forward to, the, the, the doubleheader. So it's it's a long day ahead. So let's get into it. We're actually going to do our Parasso playoff preview about the Frozen Four today because it is a big playoff matchup, you can call it, semifinals. But uh, this is presented by Parasso, the most complete choice for shaving and beard care made in Italy since 1948. Parasso has been a staple of Italian culture and barbershops globally for four generations, so get 15% off at Parasso-USA.com with promo code HOCKEY15. In all caps, HOCKEY15, that's 15% off at Parasso-USA.com with our code HOCKEY15. But speaking of that, Colby, you talk to a bunch of players, you know, four different teams. Any personalities stand out? Because there are a lot of, you know, fun and energetic kids in college hockey that I feel like don't get the publicity that the NHL players do. And you know, I think one aspect of growing the game, which we all talk about, right? It's all about growing the game in today's era. But we got to give more attention to the college hockey players because, you know, to me, you look at the NFL, the NBA, and there's so much attention on college basketball and college football that all these fans that follow football teams and basketball teams basically know everything about who their team is drafting, like the players. So, you know, I think that hockey lacks that a little bit just because, you know, there are teams who have prospects that fans don't even know about right now, you know? So um, any personalities that stood out to you yesterday in, in your conversations? Well, I thought um, Cutter Goche telling John Butchacross what number he was going to wear in Anaheim. I, I, I mean, I thought that was funny. Like, I got a kick out of that. Um, Never see that or hear that. Because you just don't see a guy who is willing to say that. I mean, a player mm -hmm. may think of that. Um but thinking about that and then actually, you know, saying it <laughs> live on camera on on a on a video that's going to going to go out on social media. Butchie has a ton of of followers on Twitter. I I just like it's just so interesting how these guys have changed over the years and and even in the last I'd say like from when I started doing the Frozen Four, I think this is like my fourth or no fifth or sixth Frozen Four with ESPN, and I did one with Westwood one previous to that they're just the kids they they're they get more comfortable with with kind of talking to you and telling you things as the years go along i mean i remember sitting in those meetings as a player 15 years ago and just kind of giving you know 
cliche answers basically and and you know not really wanting to say something that they might say on tv that my teammates could make fun of me about is 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 kind of uh is kind of the way we looked at it so well also i think back then though like you know these kids have probably done a couple podcasts here and there oh and social media they've all grown up with social media and this and that i mean there was no social media at that point so um you know i always say i had a blackberry when i was in college i didn't even have an iphone yet so um and then i'm sure some of our listeners had landlines if, Mm -hmm. if they were lucky had a landline in college so um i thought the michigan guys were 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 pretty outgoing yesterday i thought rucker mcgrory was great in our meetings i thought brinley was really good in our meetings um trying to remember who the third and fourth were um we had truscott their captain Mm -hmm. um but i i don't uh i don't remember who are who who the other person we had from michigan because it's it's a long day but um you know those guys were very confident you know they 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 seem to have the Michigan players always, to me, seem like they have the most fun. Like they have the most fun college experience in in everything that they do. Um, so, you know, those guys were great. And then, uh, you know, I thought David Carl, the coach at Denver, like he uh, he definitely strikes me as a guy who's going to coach in the NHL. Um, he uh, <laughs> Weinberg said Goche would not talk to Colby because it used to be a junior flyer. I was a <laughs> I did play for the junior flyers in youth hockey and no, I actually did show cutter Goche the video from our show from earlier this year where I like roasted him. You showed him uh, that I showed him the video. Yeah. I showed that. Well, I actually show that to him at the regionals. Cause I was like, Hey, before we have this conversation, like yeah. I want you to be aware that like I said this, yeah. um, not having any idea if he would have seen it or not. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I was like, look, I, I don't have any problem with what you did. I think the way you went about it was 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 dumb, and I think you're gonna you're gonna hear about that as a player because I think other <laughs> players probably probably feel so. I got that right out of the way. Yeah, it's like honestly, so what are your thoughts on the Frozen Four matchup? Well, I don't <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be phony to a no, guy. Course, I want him to know, like, listen, I've said this about you, you know. Mm-hmm. So I just confronted um, confronted that right off the hop with him. Um, so how do you but, take it? But again, he he it didn't seem to bother him all that. Honestly, it sounds like all that stuff fuels him. It really does. Like I think he he knows that he's he's um a little bit cocky and a little bit arrogant. I think he's knows totally it. okay with it. Yeah. I really do. Like I I think like he strikes me as the guy who like can't wait to play against the Philadelphia Flyers, which is crazy yeah. at his age. Like it's it's crazy to say that, but that's kind of how he strikes me. Um so those were those were some of the takeaways we had yesterday. Again, like it was good to meet um Shy and Zeev Booyam, you know, mm-hmm. the two Denver defensemen. I mean, the kid Zeev is gonna be a top ten pick in the NHL. There's a lot of people who are saying maybe top five pick in the NHL this year. Um, so you know, he, they they were they were interesting to meet. I mean, their their parents they were telling us their story like their parents lived in israel until they were like 25 year old 25 years old um after their military service and then they moved to san diego and like they just like started playing hockey at a little bit of a later age and they just like followed their friends to the rink and their parents didn't know what hockey was whatsoever their mom was like a really good basketball player she played pro or or like high level basketball over there in israel and so um it it was it was cool to meet them and and again like just kind of see what these kids personalities are like i did get the sense yesterday that rutger mcgordy gavin brindley and seamus casey are all planning to come come back to michigan really? um yeah and and i think seamus casey being maybe a little bit of a wild card but like unless they win this weekend like i i very much expect to see those guys back in college i mean anything can change right mm-hmm. but I, I believed them when they said their plan is 100% to return. Uh, they love being college hockey players. They're not in a rush. They're very present. And I, I like a lot of the high end first round picks. When you see them at this thing, you can tell they're like kind of one foot in, one foot out. But, well, but McGroarty, McGroarty and Brindley did knock them off as one foot in, one foot out. Like they are all in and not thinking about it and and super um super dialed in because look both of them are going to be nhlers like they yeah both but are. you think you think nil has changed that a lot 
Because I think yeah, Kansas they probably maybe make, used to be yeah, they, well, yeah, kids, kids just Michigan be eager to go get their first contract. These kids at Michigan are probably making more than you'd make in the American League. Yeah, that's why I'm saying I think the NA, the NIL has really helped kids, you know, lean towards staying more because there's no there's no pressure to support your family or anything because you already are basically right. Like it's you know it's it's shifted the way that college athletes think. I, I yeah, think you can make a, you can make a hundred grand. You can make a hundred grand pretty pretty easily if you're one of these kids, uh, which is great. Good for them. Like I, I'm happy for yeah. these guys. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so yeah, that was kind of some of the interesting takeaways yesterday. Um, it'll it'll be uh, you know the crowd's supposed to be pretty good. Um, it's also uh, it's it, it's also you know excited. Like I'm I'm back between the benches this weekend, which I love. Um, you know, but you'll be in the broad you know not in the broadcast booth. He's he's pretty low down his spot, and then I'll I'll be down between the benches. So uh, looking forward to it. Actually, long long day. Two games is a lot in in a day. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but it, it'll be fun. Like the game should be really good Four best teams, four yeah. highest scoring teams, tons of future NHL players. I think a lot of teams are well represented here. Um, organizations just with their prospects. So, uh, it, it should be, it should be, it should be good hockey tonight. Well, that's why I wanted to ask you also, which team has obviously BC and BU are somewhat of the favorites here going into both games. Which team do you think has a better chance of being upset? Um, you know, uh, it's, it's a hard question to ask because like mm -hmm. you, you really do have the most, the, the four most skilled teams here. Like you really do. I mean, when you look at the roster, it's like, yes, BC has been the best team in the country all year, although they didn't play great at, they, they didn't play great at, um, at the regional, but these matchups are much better for them. Teams that will just go at them and, and teams that aren't trying to play one, three, one neutral zones. So I, I, it, it's hard for me to see a world where, where, where B or BC loses. But again, like I won't be surprised if either of them lose, like I really won't. You get to the frozen four. You don't know how freshmen are going to be. You don't know how your goaltenders are going to be. I do think BC with Jacob Fowler, who's a Montreal Canadian third round pick, like, I think in goal, they have the edge here. Like they mm. have the best goalie. I think the other three teams have good goalies, um, but I don't think they have nearly what BC has in goal. And and I think in, in this format, um, when the nerves are high, I think that, um, you know, that that's, uh, that, that's a factor. It, it really is. So I do think the late, you know, the late game, the ice will be a little bit shittier. Um, and, and again, I don't know who that, would help because Michigan also is like high flying offense, 35% power play. I mean, it's the top two power plays in the country. Power, want first power play against first penalty kill in the Michigan BC game. Like again, like Michigan's been hot. They're feeling good about their game, but you just, you just, when the puck drops with these young kids, like you just, you just don't know, right? It's one game. It's not a seven game series. You can work yourself into and work yourself through. Like you get 60 minutes, like that's mm -hmm. it. Your college hockey career could be over, and and there's there's pressure that builds with that. One thing I noticed about I, I called one Michigan versus UMass game this year. One thing I noticed about Michigan was how active their DR in the offensive zone. Like there were so many different shifts where you have both defensemen below the goal line, like trying to create offense. And I wonder how BC will handle that in their defensive zone. I haven't been able to watch much of Denver. The only game, the only Denver game I really watched this year was that UMass game. Um, Listen, they played the just round. like. BU, BC, they 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 generate off the rush. I feel like BC's DR is active offensively. No, well, listen, I think I think the best the best and most dynamic offensive defense like decor here is Denver. I mean, you've got you know this this kid Barons is a second round pick by Colorado. Booyam is a second round pick by Detroit, and the other Booyam is going to be the fifth pick or fifth to eighth or tenth pick in the draft. Like, and they're all they're all dynamic offensively. So. You know, it, it's uh, it, it's 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 again, it's best on best. Like teams are going to go right at each other. Do I think it's going to be a massively high scoring game? I'd probably bet the over if, if you're betting on the games. I would probably both bet games? both overs. But I, I think the overs are probably at what? Like, I, I don't know what the line is. Maybe maybe Vic, you can look it up. Maybe our bet of the of our betway bet of the day could be uh will be one college of the college game. games. Um, like that. But I I I'm sure the line's going to be probably seven would be my guess. And and no I think you, I, you never see that. 
I mean, rarely. Okay, so six and a half, maybe. Oh, you're right. It. You're right. They're both at seven. Wow. Shit. Okay, so you basically, yep. you know, you need a five four game to hit, and and it 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 could be that way. Like I, I wouldn't crazy. be shocked. So, yeah, I mean, look, at seven. You've got the four highest scoring teams in 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 the country. So yeah, but um, you think also like this time of year and like in like championship games, it gets tighter and, and yeah, tougher and it each, could you know? it it could. So um, that's like I don't a know trap. if we have any. I don't know if we have any flyers. If we have any of our flyers listeners in here today, but I, I did I did hear that Rizzo Massimo Rizzo, the guy they traded for, um, that was leading their team in points, but he's been out for a while. I did hear he's going to play. Um, don't know how much sounds like he's been practicing for the last two weeks, but there are some limitations. I think, you know, you'll see him definitely on the power play, probably going to start on the, on the fourth line. But if he, if he feels good, he'll move quickly, get elevated up the, um, up the lineup. So, you know, people thought that the flyers were crazy when they made that trade for Rizzo. But again, like you look at his points, he's got like 45 points in 28 games in college. I mean, that's, those are big numbers. Like those are mm. very big numbers. So, um, you know, that, that's one thing people have actually been tweeting at me, asking me about, about Rizzo at Denver, like, will he play? And, and it, it does sound like he is on track to play. So any other storylines to look out for either tonight or, or Saturday or the awards tomorrow? Um, anything that you kind of have your focus on here? Um, well, look, I think the Hobie Baker is going to go to Macklin Celebrini. That's, that's kind of the word on the street. Um, they've known who it is for at least a week, but they don't announce it until tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I, I do think it's, it's a pretty close race between Goche and, and, um, and Macklin, but I do, I do think Celebrini is going to win the award. I, I, I think that, um, you know, that will be, uh, that, that will definitely be, um, you know, something to look out for tomorrow. And, and the other thing is, is interestingly enough, like Pandolfo, the coach at BU had a great NHL career, Stanley cup champ, you know, go down the list. He, he was telling us that he, he like, he wouldn't recommend as much as he'd love Celebrini back next year. Like he wouldn't even recommend it. That's how good he thinks he is. He's like, mm. this kid's ready to go play in the NHL and make an impact on the NHL now. Um, which is, which is pretty crazy. Cause he's 17. Yeah. And uh, we have a couple of people in the chat asking when the first game starts. Uh, it's five Eastern and eight thirty Eastern, from what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Is that ESPN two? Mm -hmm. um, ESPN two. So you know, it's uh, it, it it it'll be a doubleheader. I mean, the second game could start later, obviously, if if there's overtime or whatever. But you know, that's that's the, that's the normal times. You can catch both games on ESPN two. Um, there there'll be some studio lead-ins, and there'll be a between show and all this stuff with with andrew raycroft out of uh out of bristol um so Question yeah for that, you yeah sorry I, I didn't mean to, to cut you off go there. ahead um just while i was fresh in my mind if that 5 p.m game let's say it goes to overtime double overtime and you can't start the second game till let's say 10 30 11 eastern are they still playing that because like you, you have to do it right because you can't just shift Saturday's game into Sunday unless you can maybe find a way to. Do, I don't know. No, exactly. they'll, they'll play. It, they'll, they'll start. Play, no they'll drop what. the puck. They'll drop the puck at eleven p.m. Because that's a real possibility. Yeah, they uh, they will literally um, they will literally drop the puck at eleven p.m. if they have to. I mean, hopefully that doesn't happen because I'm I'll be freezing my my ass off <laughs> yeah. between, between the benches for a very long time. So. Um, I, I, I truly hope that doesn't happen, but yeah, no, it'll, it'll just, the, the frozen four will be on all night tonight. Obviously there'll be NHL games surrounding it, but, um, it, it will, uh, it, it'll be on all night. So do you have any, uh, any rituals or anything you do in between the benches for a day like this? I mean, it's a busy day for you. Like I, I imagine, you know, try to limit the bathroom trips as much as you can, uh, being in between no. the benches, but. No, I go, I'll go to I'll get off between the benches between periods for mm -hmm. and 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 just go stand in the back hall because I'll go try to find coach the coaches between the periods yeah. um and just see what's going on and and see what they're you know see see what's happening what they're talking about and stuff like that. So um New York Marines asking will I be between the benches for <clears throat> um will I be between the benches for both games? Yeah, I will. Um uh, you know one up, one down, sort of like how McDonough and, and Ray Ferraro do it. There, there won't be anybody in the booth with Butchie. So, 
Um, we'll miss Barry Melrose this year. This is our first Frozen Four without him, so we'll we'll definitely miss him this year. We are doing a, a, a tribute to him. Um, <clears throat> I think leading into the first game, so we'll we'll definitely we'll definitely have some Barry Melrose talk off the opening puck drop for sure. That's awesome. Um, okay, so just to wrap things up here for the Frozen Four, when it's all said and done, who's meeting in the championship game on Saturday and who's coming away with the trophy? <clears throat> well, look, I, I I'm not gonna tell you. I'm I'm not gonna give you my my championship prediction. You know, mm -hmm. I I as somebody who's doing the game, um, I I, I don't. Uh, I, I don't really need to go down that road with anybody, but I, I don't know. I, I, if, if I would say, I, I think BU and BC will win today. Um, mm -hmm. but, but I also, I, I really, I've seen enough of these to know that it, it just doesn't always go that way. <clears throat> and so it, it would not surprise, like no outcome will surprise me tonight. It, it really won't. I mean, unless, you know, Michigan comes out and beats BC seven to one. I mean, that would shock me. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, we, uh, we definitely have, have teams that are, that are highly skilled teams that can score teams that can make plays. So, um, yeah, I, I think I'm, I think BU and BC will win today, but it, you know, I, I don't really care because we have all the right teams. Sometimes you have one fan base or one small market school or one small name school. And you're like hoping they don't, you know, you don't, you, you want the bigger name school. It's good for viewers and ratings and buzz. And it doesn't matter this year. Like it really doesn't since mm -hmm. it's the four teams that we have. So, um, you know, I, I hope Rutger McGordy ha has a big weekend. I, I mean, I, I, I really like him. Um, you know, I, I, I Got to spend some time with his family last night, and and I've known them forever since he's four years old. I hope Shane Lachance has has a good game for BU. Is another kid that like he was running around our locker room when he was four. His father Scott Lachance played, uh, you know, played in the NHL. But um, you know, his his mom is Jack Parker's daughter. Was say Jack Parker's grandson, right? Right. So Shane was in the locker room at four years old when I was in school, and was in the team picture when we won the national championship. So it's a cool story to me. Like I, I want to see him do well. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what happens. And, and, uh, hope the I hope those Booyan brothers have a good game. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll see, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll see. I think a Michigan Denver final is just as exciting. Like you said, as a BCBU final. So yeah, well the two, two teams that have the most, I think, well, Michigan, I think Denver has the most national championships. I think North Dakota and Michigan are second. And then I think BU and BC are, are third. So tied for third, you know, one, two, you know, so you've mm -hmm. got, you've got, you've got all the big, the big powerhouses here, Johnny. All right. Well, now let's get into some NHL action. Uh, great insight from Colby about college hockey. And I'm sure we'll uh, all have fun watching you on TV for the next couple nights here, but the Vegas Golden Knights last night have not helped themselves. They continue to, I don't want to say shit the bed, but they're not looking like a team that's going to go on a long playoff run right now. And the St. Louis Blues continue to hang on for dear life. They're three points back, although Vegas has a game in hand, four points back of L.A. The Blues still believe they can do it. Their schedule is going to be a little bit tough. The Blues have three games left. They play Carolina tomorrow, Seattle on Sunday, and then Dallas on Wednesday. So two out of those three games are very, very tough. Do you see any scenario where no. St. Louis can do this no no chance, right? and and here's the thing like they were up four nothing on the blackhawks last night by the time you turned on the game i mean it was mm. four nothing coming out the of the first, first eight period. Minutes. yeah and then and then the blackhawks actually made some pretty good pushes um you know so uh, no i really don't see that happening like i think vegas is gonna kind of get in and it's funny like last night we were at this place called Tom Reed's. It's a bar right by the, you know, by the arena here. And there was like a number of, of, you know, NHL pr people in there, you know, a couple GMs, assistant GMs, scouts, whatever. And we kind of got into the debate last night of talking about teams that aren't playing well going into, um, going into playoffs. And it was really interesting. It was very split, um, between people who said, you need to be playing well going into playoffs. And then there were a number of guys who said, look, like, don't worry about Florida. Matthew Kachuk can turn it on. He can't play the way he plays all regular season. Like this is the dog days. Guys are just trying to get to the finish line, get in, get the playoffs started. 
the way the playoffs are formatted this year, or not this year, but in general, teams like aren't as concerned with where they finish because you're you're probably going to draw a shitty matchup no matter what. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, so uh, it's like teams are not giving, you know, players are not giving that extra effort and, and you know, probably playing at 100%. So you feel, you know, there were a number of, of, of you know, guys who, who, who are, you know, amateur scouts, GMs, whatnot, talking about this last night. And they all were like, yeah, I think Florida is still a problem. I think Florida, like the general – and I was like, really? Like, I don't think limping into the playoffs is healthy, even for a team like Vegas. Like, they're all still looking at Vegas like we still think Vegas can can run the table. And I'm like, you know, the Oilers beat them up last night without McDavid. Um, well, granted, they just like, didn't have Petrangelo either. But like, but listen, you might not have so, like in yeah. the playoffs, guys are injured, too. You know, it's not yeah. like you, you, you get a clean bill of health for the playoffs all the time either. So I, I just... There was definitely a, a a very split room last night about like, can you play like shit heading into the playoffs? Can you limp into the playoffs? Does that affect, you know, your your confidence as a as a team? And I truly believe it does. Like, I really believe playing poorly heading into playoffs, it it it's it's definitely in the back of your mind. Like, you want to feel good going into game one because you just want to know that you don't have to think about it. You're just gonna put your gear on and you've played well, and and, and you know you're you're gonna show up and you're gonna have an A or B game. And, and again, like I'll tell you guys all this. Confidence is very fickle for most players. There's obviously like the David Posternocks and the the McDavid's and the McKinnons, and they just like literally look like they can just show up and go but then there's mm -hmm. the remainder of the groups where like you're you, you need to have confidence in yourself you need to when when you're confident things are not happening as fast you're seeing more more opportunities more plays more lanes you feel like you're getting more bounces you have extra energy your legs don't feel as heavy like you these are real things that human beings that play this sport go through and feel so i, I worry about the teams that really are limping in like i think those teams potential have potential to get behind early in a series and and they may try to work their way out of it but what happens if you run into a hot goalie and you're already down you know two games like what what happens at that point and and, and so i i think it's dangerous and and i think that it's uh it it's it's something that you've got to be careful if you're the vegas golden knights out west you know the the way you're kind of you know, limping in, going up and down and up and down. Like I, I just, I that wouldn't make me feel good if I'm Bruce Cassidy mm -hmm. or Kelly McCrimmon. Well, then on the flip side too, like the teams that are at the top, like Dallas, Vancouver, you know, Boston, Rangers, Carolina. When do you start sitting players to rest them and make sure they're healthy? Because you know, this is maybe more to do in the East, just because I think all the teams at the top want to avoid Tampa. So I think they're all trying to lock up first place. Like someone asked me yesterday, you know, if, if Zabanjad and Lindgren can play tonight, do you play them? And I was like, yes, you definitely, play. you, you clinch first place and then rest everyone. Yeah. But that might not be the case for some of these teams. I mean, the West, especially, uh, I, I don't know if they're necessarily like avoiding a Vegas or a Nashville. Um, I'm sure like if you're Edmonton though, who do you prefer to play? Like Los Angeles or Vegas right now with how last night's game went? Because Vegas can still pass but LA. Again, this is why I said like it the doesn't way really matter. Playoffs right? are, yeah. It's not like it, it, it there's not a good matchup to be drawn, you know, unless okay, you, so unless you're number one in your conference and you mm -hmm. get that second wild card team, that seems to be the one line in the sand, yeah. right? Wild card one. And then everyone else has a fucking gauntlet, basically, of a, of a matchup, you know, which is great. It's great for hockey. But like in the East, like there's whoever's going to limp into the last spot and then basically everybody else. Like, do I think if the Islanders end up third in the Metro, like, do I think that that's a super hard series as a two, three? Yeah. Like, no, because the Islanders haven't been very good all year. They just haven't. You know, and and I know they've played better as of late, but like they're going in without their starting goaltender. You know, Varlamov is is seemingly the guy right now. Which again, like, how can you? That that's not a recipe for success. But he did play so really well the other night. But I know he did. I yeah. I know he did. But you know, you you just you want to go in like with your starting goalie. Like, imagine if if Shesterkin wasn't playing yeah. good right now. How we would had you the feel same like, argument? 
How would you feel about that? Even though yeah. you know Jonathan Quick is capable. So, um, you know, I, 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 I just think other than the top team in each conference, everybody else is getting a bad matchup. So I don't think you sit everybody, but I uh -huh. think you definitely find a day off or a game off for, for your, your 25 minute a night type of players or forwards, 21, 22 minute a night type of players. I, I do. I think, you know, you, you try to get them a little bit of extra rest heading into the playoffs. Maybe it's, you know, a couple guys, one game and a couple guys, another, I, you know, but then you just, you don't really see that in the NHL that often. Like you just don't. Yeah. So I'm, I'm afraid of asking this question, but I'm going to do it anyway. I went on Barton Hahn yesterday. It's a New York radio uh, sports show um, on ESPN 98.7. And, you know, Bart played for the New York Jets for a very long time. And we were talking about the regular season in the NHL not really mattering. And it's the only – is mattering a word? That's a word, right? That sounded so weird coming out of my mouth. But um, you look at the other three major sports and the MLB, they have that divisional round, same thing, or the wild card round, same thing with the NFL, like the, the teams that win their division get a buy. NBA now has the plan. And I'm not talking about necessarily extending or expanding the playoffs. I know we've had that conversation and the playoffs right now are what make hockey so special, but is there some sort of way where if a team wins their division, they can just get a buy or something to to make the regular season matter a little bit more. Like we saw it last year. You could have the best regular season in the history of the game and you can get fucking, you can lose in the first round because every team has basically well, the same exact advantage. You do get home home ice advantage, which does matter because it, it does buy you more, more days in your own bed, mm -hmm. more time at home. You but know, it seems you like it. you agree though that the regular season doesn't really matter with these matchups and how it works. Look, I don't like the format. I think one versus eight is the right format because I think there's there that the, the best team should play the eighth team. Here's something they could look at. They could say if you win the Metro or the Atlantic, right, or or the Pacific or the Central, like if you win your division, you get to pick who you play in the first round. Like you get to choose which team you get to play, in, and then everyone else would just get just like seated, would just get reseated under you. And not only do I think that that would be a reward and awesome, imagine the hatred yeah. and the shit that that would create on the ice. I think like, we've talked oh, about this. You right? wanted to play us mm -hmm. or, or like, oh, those guys, do, they don't want us for a reason. You know what I mean? Like, think of the drama and the intrigue that that – imagine them doing like some sort of special on TV where like they pick. Um, I mean, it'll never happen. But I, I don't but hate that I idea at all. I got to tell you something. Just think of the intrigue that that would bring. Think of the like they want to create more rivalries, you know, like that. That would make teams hate each other. Like there would be some bad blood, which the playoffs are all about bad blood. And, and that's one of the things that makes the playoffs awesome. So um, I think that's 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 something that they could look at. But you, you know, see what I'm saying, I, though, right? Like, we always talk about hockey being the most physical sport. It's the most physically demanding. It's 82 games. You've got knives on your feet. You're hitting each other. You're fighting. Yet it's the only sport that doesn't reward necessarily the regular season, in, in my opinion. Well, home ice advantage, though, is, is an advantage. I mean, especially come playoff time. It, it doesn't seem to be as much of an advantage in the regular season anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, a, it's an advantage. Like, you get an extra home game. OK, it's less traveling, you know, I mean, there there are there are reasons that that it, it does give you an advantage. Um, I'm sure they could come up with more ways to, you know, make that home ice advantage or, or those seeds maybe feel a little bit more weighted. I, I you know, maybe they, they let the top series start later. Um, and you get a little more time. Off. Like, I, I don't know, they they, they, they got to get together on it, but you know, at the end of the day, like I think parity is always pretty big. I mean, we're we're gonna see a two seven, maybe upset somewhere, even though it's not actually two seven, but like yeah. it is. I mean, it's 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 number two against wild card, you know, two or whatever. Like you, you look at those, like you could you could easily say like one of those one of those wild card teams could knock off a team, right? 100%. So, yeah. um, it, I agree. It, it it's it's. It's definitely something that they probably continue to look at and figure out. But look, how much hockey does Bart Scott watch and understand? I mean, well, again, it, was, maybe, it was mostly Allen. It was mostly maybe, Allen. Maybe Allen. he's a, 
maybe he's uh maybe he's a um uh a closeted hockey fan but i i just can't really see that yeah it was mostly alan han and alan's han's son actually was a freshman at unh this year uh on the blue line for for the wildcats so he's a big hockey guy he covered the islanders big islanders fan but um let's get into our out west worst team of the week and the worst team of this week is presented by the best up and coming activewear brand in the game out west colby and i are both rocking it right now literally quite the comfiest thing i've ever put on my body uh, ready to I've been living years. in this thing. Yeah, it's unreal. Uh, I think I wore mine two days ago also, my, my salmon one that Kobe refuses to wear. But if you're ready to elevate your style this spring, we are introducing Out West, your go-to activewear line for athletes or everyday guys crafted with quality in mind and price for the guy not looking to break the bank to upgrade his wardrobe. Out West polos, hoodies, and quarter zips blend comfort and performance seamlessly, ensuring you look and feel your best as you take on the day. So head on over to outwestgolf.com and use code CUPPA, that's C-U-P-P-A in all caps, to get 15% off of your first order. So that's outwestgolf.com and use code CUPPA, C-U-P-P-A in all caps, to get 15% off your first order. I think it's obvious the worst team of this week. Last week, we had the Philadelphia Flyers. This week, it's going to be the Arizona Coyotes, even though they did win 4-3 to three in Vancouver last night in overtime. But this whole mess with the Coyotes and Utah, and it seems inevitable, and it seems like it's basically already a done deal that this team is moving next season. I mean, Kobe, what do you think? You know, Daily Faceoff had a great article about this whole yeah. scenario yesterday that we both read. Um, you know, they've made two schedules according to Frank Saravalli, one where this team's in Utah, one when they're where they're in Arizona. So, you know, this whole mess, it seems like it's about to be taken care of. We had Frank on Tuesday, and he talked about the situation as well. But what did you make of all this stuff that happened yesterday? Enough is enough. I mean, I think I've been pretty steadfast with my opinion that the, the Coyotes have just really turned into a freaking joke. It, it, it You feel bad for the people who are fans of that team, but um, their owner has just made a mockery of this for years now, whether it was when they got locked out of the other building for not paying taxes um, you know, reading an article in the athletic about how people's salaries weren't getting paid in the front offices. And it's just, it's, it's a really bad look like, and look, I, I know the rumor is he's going to sell to the league. The league's going to flip it to, to the Utah guy. Um, and then they're going to continue to work on bringing a team back to Arizona. Like, fine. I, I have no problem with a team in Arizona, but find a new owner. Like this guy is not cut out to own a team. He, he really isn't. I mean, um, you know, it's never good when you hear about an owner as often as we hear about the guy in Arizona. It really isn't. I mean, I feel like you hear about some owners in the NFL that, you know, whether it's the Washington commanders, former, you know, Redskins, former owner, Dan Snyder, who had to sell his team. Um, you know, you always hear about, um, you know, it, 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 it's just that the, is it, um, who, who's the, oh, the, is it the Indianapolis? No, it's not Indianapolis. It's, uh, uh, the Carolina, the Carolina Panthers owner. You hear nothing oh. but bad things about that guy. I mean, it's just, you don't want to be in the news if you're an owner and, and enough is enough. Um, this needs to happen. Get them out of Arizona. This, yeah, like there's too many unknowns with this whole land auction. And can he actually get the support to build what he needs to build? Does he have the money to do it? You know, again, enough's enough. It's 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 becoming a laughing stock. Um, you know, like the Oakland A's are in baseball, and, mm -hmm. and get get them to get them get them to Utah. Let them build a new stadium. They already have something they can play in there. Start building your fan base. Um, you know, take the three hundred million or four hundred million they're going to make off it. Deliver it to the you know, spread it out through the other teams, um, and, and just be done with it. I mean. The only thing I'm so curious about, and this would be a frank question, but like, and he may not even know the answer. What happens to the guys who like bought houses in Arizona? Like what happens to like, like our, 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 our does the play? And, and again, it's, it's a PA question. Cause I know how it happens when you tra get traded, but like, you know, what happens if you just bought a, a, a huge house and like, now it's like, you got to sell it. And what if you're going to lose a bunch of money on it? Like, what is the PA? Um, you know, what does the PA do? What, how do they, how do they lean in on this type of thing? And, and our player is going to ask to get traded, um, because they, they don't want to be going to Utah. They thought they were, they're signing their deal in, in Arizona. And so like the PA has to approve anything that happens today. 
Um, you know, there are some players in Arizona that have modified no trade clauses, but what happens if they relocate to, to a new team? Do they go with them? I, I, you know, cause I know when you get traded, your no move or no trade doesn't necessarily follow you. I, they're, they're different situations. So, um, it, it's, uh, yeah, Jeremiah said David Tepper, the Carolina Panthers owner. Like, it's just, it's never good when the owner is getting as much press as, as mm -hmm. Alex Marullo is. And I just, the whole thing's funny to me because Frank was on this like a week ago when everybody was celebrating this new big old building they were going to build. And Frank was like, look, I'm just going to say pump the brakes a little bit here. There's a lot that needs to go right between now and then. And like, why would we be confident it's going to happen? And I remember this reporter, and I think I've already brought this up, like, was like, you have no idea what you're talking about. You're yeah. a half-baked journalist. Was like attacking Frank. And like, now I'm just like, this is hysterical. Like, where's that lady now? Like, I don't see her tweeting at Frank now about how he doesn't know what he's talking about. So um, it, it, it's the whole thing, man. It's just, it's become a major embarrassment. It really has. If I'm a betting man, Johnny, they leave uh -huh. and there's not a team in Arizona. That, yeah, they, they that is that. what I that is what I will bet. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. listen, you also make a really good point about the players like buying houses and, you know, thinking long term for themselves in Arizona. Like it's it's pretty unfair. Right. I mean, it's not something you really sign off on. And I don't know if many fans are really thinking that way or like thinking about the players. I, I feel I mean, like look, players get traded all the time. Yeah, but this it's, is it's different. Common, but... I mean, this this is different. You know, imagine you've got that no trade clause and you're like, all right, I can buy. I'm going to buy a house now. And, yeah. and now, again, like abruptly, like teams moving. So um, it's just, you know, it's just it's it's stuff that that that's real. And, and you know, it it's just but this needs to end. And, and the yeah. Coyotes Twitter I mean, like even all day yesterday, like the videos and everything. Are yeah. Bullshit. Like, I, why are they leaning into being morons? Like, I, I, I guess they're like, no attention is bad attention. Yeah. I would disagree in this situation. It's bad attention. I, I agree. And, and just the last thing I'll say about this topic uh, one of my roommates uh, from college at Mercyhurst uh, played for the Utah Grizzlies, grew up actually in Utah. And I was talking to him a little bit yesterday just about how hockey could work there if the team was to move there. And he said, you know, they have a 10,000 seat arena in the East Coast League and they get like 6,500 a game. So, you know, there are fans that show up to yeah. support hockey in Utah. And it's not even an AHL team. It's an East Coast League yeah. team. So no, I think and, if the NHL look, does go there, it could be a pretty build, cool city. And they're going to build a big arena that seats 17,000 and, and it can work in the mountain towns. I mean, honestly, it works in Colorado. You, you look at some of the junior teams in Montana and South Dakota and some mm -hmm. of these other and they draw really well. People in that part of the country really do get involved in hockey. It's cold weather. And I feel like those cold weather climates always kind of find a way. So um, we will see. Uh, yes, New York Marine. I know that they don't have any full no trade clauses, but they have some modified no trade clauses. So again, it, it's just, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's a shitty, difficult situation and good for the players not mailing it in last night because they very easily could have so yeah um, Gunther, let, let, uh, look we we i i just want to talk about out west before we move on to, to to our bet of the day just because like johnny and i are both wearing these hoodies and um look i'm very stubborn if a sponsor <laughs> wants to sponsor us and is like we need you to wear this and like i don't like it i'm not gonna wear it i'll just be like yeah we're good you know but this <laughs> thing like if you're a golfer this is a great, I mean, it's light, it's stretchy, it's soft. I could sleep in this or I could golf in this. I wore this yesterday to the, um, you know, to, to our meetings and everything like that. And somebody was like, what's that logo? I'm like, I know it's cool. It's like the old cowboy. Um, it's, it's, it's a cool logo. Like I, I, uh, I, I honestly, I wish they had more colors, um, mm -hmm. and, and more options. Cause I, they're a new emerging brand, but Go check those guys out. Um, you see it in the chat right now uh, on YouTube, and there's a 15% off special code from us. You know, give them give them a try, get something. It it helps the show, it helps the brand, but ultimately, like you will not be disappointed with your purchases from Out West, especially our golfers, because it seems a little catered to you right now. I do think they're going to expand their offering and and kind of go wider than golf, but. But it's it's certainly a good product that I like. All right, Kobe. Well, let's get into the Betway bet of the day. We have 10 NHL games tonight. 
but we're, I don't know we're, if we're, we're going yeah. the NHL route. We're 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 going NCAA tonight for for our Betway bet of the day, and our our promo continues. Um, a free two hundred dollar bet if you lose. Uh, on Betway, you create a new account, you scan the QR code on the screen. Um, that will load your bonus into your account the minute your bet doesn't hit. Again, if you bet five hundred and you lose, they'll give you two hundred dollars back. You can use that to continue to bet on games, continue to bet on sports, things that you love. Try to make that money back. As always, though, bet responsibly. The offer is only available outside of Ontario, so anywhere else, okay? And as always, must be 19 years of age or older to play. And we're going a little Frozen 4 for our Betway bet of the day. And we talked about the high-scoring offenses we have here at the Frozen 4. So the BU-Denver game, six and a half. And... We're going to go with the over on six and a half, which again, to think the game would be four, three is, is pretty reasonable. Um, and so I think this is your better opportunity here to get over. You're getting plus money with the two, two of the three or four highest scoring teams in the country. You know, neither team has a, a star star goaltender. They've got good goaltending. They don't have Jacob Fowler or, or Trey Augustine from, from Michigan state. So um, I think that, uh, that that's a good one to look at. The other game is plus seven and a half. Okay. The BC Michigan game. And, and I mean, imagine like a nine, six game like that, that it could happen that that game will be awesome. So, um, get involved with Betway. use the free $200. Um, we don't know how long that promo is going to continue to last. I have a feeling once we get into playoffs, they're going to flip it and, and do some other type of intro promo. So Take advantage of this one while you can. As always, thanks to our partners at Betway, okay? And also our partners at Out West, our partners at Pro Rasa. We couldn't do this without those guys. Um, they help keep our show going. They help keep our show alive. We got to pay Johnny a lot of money to do this show every morning. <laughs> so that money has to come from somewhere. Someone's got to pay for the dates, right? Although you're you're paying for one of them with the Flyers uh, with that bet. So... I am, um, I am. You'll have to let me know when you want to go and I'll, uh, I'll make that happen at catch. I'll, I'll have Alex, uh, call in and get my credit card on file. And I'm going to probably, <laughs> put, I'm probably going to have to put a cap on it. Um, ordering tons of apps. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to probably have to put a $500 cap on it. Cause I don't, I don't want you to be too greedy. Although you wouldn't do that. No, I'd probably just would. go myself. <laughs> I know you wouldn't do that. No, I want I want you to take no, a date. I want you to I, I want you to take a date and I want you to wear a GoPro. But so that's I, setting the bar too high if I go on a first date to catch. Like what the like how do how do you, I Yeah, but maybe it's a date that you only want to happen once. Like maybe it's more of like a one, you know, like a one timer. Like I want to act like a big timer. I wanna, okay. you know, have a good long night and then I, you know, that that could be the end. And just it. ghost. <laughs> I mean, don't ghost, but just, you know, make sure you guys are on the same page. Yeah. Communicate. Yeah. Listen, communication is key. You you I always got to communicate. All right. You you will get in a lot less trouble with, with your female counterpart if you communicate. Okay. I've I learned communicate this too much. <laughs> you probably do from what I understand <laughs> in, in your, in your dating life, you probably do communicate too much. So, all right, I got to go. We've got a yeah. production meeting. Uh, mm-hmm. Here in, in ten minutes, and and uh, I got to get myself and and drag my ass out of my room. Um, we appreciate everybody jumping in today. I know today was a little bit of a different show, you know, doing the Frozen Four. Um, but um, I'm going to see Jeremiah tomorrow, by the way. So so our guy Jeremiah is here at the Frozen we need a Four. We love too. that. We will definitely get a picture and and get it on social media. I'm sure your mom would like a nice meal. But cat, why don't you? That's actually a great That's actually call. An idea. Yeah. Why don't you why don't you invite Karen into the city and go to dinner with her? That's a nice idea. And it doesn't have, have to, to be catch. You you could take her to Nobu, you could take her whatever you want. If she likes sushi, you could go to um I mean there's a number of good restaurants. We're not really we're not really fancy people. We're pretty easy. Like Okay. You know. So, you know, you go to Prince Street Pizza then. I, yeah, you know, whatever you want to do. <laughs> but uh you you choose. But but yeah. I think Catherine just made a great suggestion. That I think a good point. great suggestion. And my mom that listens would, to it. I why Marine said Johnny's and I love you on the first date kind of guy. I actually that's actually me. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't joke about it because it's kind of embarrassing. I would feel really good <laughs> about buying that meal if you took your mom. I think that would be 
you could do a Mother's Day thing. That's coming up. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I like that. I like that. That's a good idea. I think we'll go with that. Um, but I know you got to go. I just wanted to mention one more thing before we end the show. We can do a whole dating segment next week. But Detroit versus Pittsburgh tonight, biggest game for those two teams this year. And then Washington versus Buffalo. Keep your eye on those three teams because those are the three teams right now. What do you like in those games? Pittsburgh over Detroit for me. Um, it's it just, it's so hard to bet against Crosby and the Penguins right now. Um, and then I don't know why, but I, I feel like Buffalo might upset Washington tonight. I mean, Washington looks pretty lifeless the last time these two teams met and Buffalo, like granted, while they're not really playing for much right now, they're playing they, to be spoilers. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I think Washington just doesn't really have it all there. So, so when we talk on Mondays, Pittsburgh in a playoff spot or not? Ooh, I say yes. I don't know who they're playing Saturday, so I have to look at their game Saturday. But I would say look. that Pittsburgh. I'll look right now. Uh, Pittsburgh yeah, plays. Well, the Caps play the Lightning Saturday. That's a tough matchup. Red Wings play the Leafs. Pittsburgh plays Boston. Oh shit! All three teams have tough games on Saturday. So, um, so, so, so they better win tonight. Yeah, they better win tonight. Uh, so are we? Are yeah. we feeling like the the Islanders are going to make the playoffs? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I've said that I feel like since the the All Star break, you and, have, and there there were reasons to not believe it. But um, I I, I didn't drink that at all. So and yeah. I still don't think they're they're a real. It's because everyone else has sucked. It's not really like I think taken I over. think I think Carolina will have their way with them. I I really do. I mean, um. So so when we talk on Monday, so we're saying New York, the Islanders are in mm -hmm. between Pittsburgh and Washington. Washington's one point ahead, same amount of games. Okay, they both have four games. Pittsburgh's schedule is Detroit, Boston, Nashville, New York Islanders. Okay. Who's going to be in that second wild card spot come Monday? Washington or Pittsburgh? I that is a brutal schedule for Pittsburgh. I think Pittsburgh Detroit, be Boston, Nashville, New York Islanders. Well, when's the game against Nashville? I think that game is Monday. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm so just I saying, think, come yeah. Monday, are they ahead of the Washington Capitals come Monday? I think so. Okay. All right. You? you? Um, I think I think Pitt's gonna find its way into the second wild card. I actually think I think the Caps lose both games. I think they lose against Buffalo tonight and Saturday against Tampa. Yeah. And I'm sorry, Jeremiah. I know you're gonna be a little upset about me saying that. I, I think Pitt and Detroit are gonna slug it out for that spot. I'd not Washington. Mm -hmm. But again, I won't be mad because I I, lo I love Ovi. Like I I love watching Ovi play. Like I, but I think yeah. Pitt gives you a better run for your money in the playoffs. I think these are all like pretty good options to have make yeah. the playoffs. Um, all right, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see what happens come Monday. Uh, make sure you watch the Frozen Four tonight, ESPN two. Uh, it's going to be a long, long couple six six periods, but there's no shortage of hockey on tonight. It's also on ESPN Plus, by the way. So if you're a if you don't if you're not a cable person and you have uh, ESPN Plus, it, it'll be on there as well. Um, I'm going to try not to to fight with anyone. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm not going to fight. You know, live anyone. tweeting during the games. I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm not because between the benches, I I can't. It's not you know. I don't have a nice, comfy booth. You know, I, I have fun with the fans when I'm between the benches rather than fucking with people on social media. <laughs> so. All right, uh, I'll talk to you. Okay, buddy. Uh, good yeah. good job today. Good job, Vic. Uh, thanks to everybody in the chat. We appreciate the questions. We'll be back to you know some hardcore NHL talk on Monday. We'll see who wins the Frozen Four. If any of the big stars come out on top, we'll try to get them on next week. Um, you know, maybe we'll try to get someone to break some news if they're going to sign or stay on the show next week. Uh, but I'll, I'll have a good week. Everybody have a good weekend. Make sure you watch all the hockey. Make sure you watch the frozen four in the national championship. We will talk to everybody on Monday. Johnny, have a good one, bud. Yep. What's up, hockey fans? If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at Daily Faceoff. Exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider, Frank Saravalli, fantasy updates from Brock Sagan, and a daily live show at noon Eastern, Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content, so hit that subscribe button.